Talk to me about the power of the black dollar. We recently saw the blackout across America, the economic blackout across America, July 7th, where people were told, look, support black businesses. Do you think more can be accomplished in terms of activism and helping our people get to another level if we only supported one another or at least show the bigger establishment that if we pull our dollars for even one day, your bottom line will be affected. I think I think that is that is the the key to our, you know what, what it is that we look for the equity, um, the justice, and all all of those things that we we talk about that we want as black people. The key to it is us establishing ourselves economically and as a, a power. You know, sh- showing that we can be on one court, one accord for one day or, or just for one situation, you know, because when you can see if, if anybody, you know, just during this time of the Black Lives Matter movement and, and, and showing how you look at organizations that have received donations from just black people and, and you see how quickly you they, it immediately raises money. Whenever black um, powers, superpowers um, as a lot of the athletes and you know artists and everything speak up and say, "Hey, this is what we all doing at one time." That immediately shifts a level of our economics, you know. So when when we get on that uh, that page and we say to ourselves, "Okay, this is what we're doing," and we're you know, and the powers that be, the people who have voices, who have platforms, say that we all doing this at one time, you know, that you see a complete shift in a way America deals with black people because at that point they will understand unity. The unity that the black people have, they understand the power, they just haven't been seen it unified. They know the power and that's why they keep us divided. That's why they'll have Kanye, you know, they'll promote Kanye saying this and they'll promote Terry Crews saying these things because they need that. They need that those level of people that infiltrate and get grab some black people with them, you know, and the Candace Owens and all of them. They need those people to seem like they represent black people, you know? And if we decide and say to ourselves, like I say all the time, it's not about uniformity. That's not doing every, we, we don't need uniformity. We need unity. We need people who have power. Who Stop have there voice. for a second. Stop there because I want to highlight that. Go back. Say that again slow. The difference between uniformity and unity. Unity is people who are united for one goal. Uniformity are people who are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. We don't need, I don't need you to do what I do. You understand what I'm saying? But we all got to have the same goal. You got to play your part. It's like a basketball team. Uniformity is everybody playing the point guard. We don't need everybody playing the point guard. Teamwork is, I need you to get the rebound. You know what I'm saying? I need you to shoot the three. I'm going to run the ball up. We all have to do our own part. And it doesn't have to be the same way. You don't have to play your game the way I play mine. It just has to figure out how do we play in the same game, different ways to where we win. And you might drive around a block to get – we all going to the same destination. We all know we have to get there. You know, it's just like we, we have to realize, like, being in prison and we was trying to break out and we was all chained to each other. And you might have a different religion than I have. We might not. But we know we need to get out this prison. Mm-hmm. So the bottom line is today we got to work together because our same goal is to get the hell out this prison. So I don't care if you think about Allah, you think Jesus, you are atheist. None of that matters right now. But the only thing we worried about is the one goal we have is to get out of prison. And that's what it is with black people. I don't care if you're a Republican, if you're a, a, a Democrat. I don't care what you're, you know, partisan. I don't care about none of that. You know that if you, if your goal is to the liberation of black people and getting equity and getting what we deserve as black people, then we're on the same team. And, and, and they divide us in so many different ways. You know, we just have to be unified to say, listen, the bottom line is that black people need to get to a level of equity that we have not seen in this country. And we have a unique opportunity right now to get there. So I don't care about your personal beliefs. I don't care about what you think or how much money. If you believe that black people need to be treated fairly and require justice, 
then that's all I need you to do. And tell me what you're willing to do to get to it. And I'm going to say, okay, you do that, and I'm going to do this, and we're going to put this all together, and we're going to get to the same place. Question for you. I, 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 I got to say I was so proud of, of this generation that has gotten beat up for the majority of their life, meaning the millennials. Everybody felt as though they were entitled. Everybody felt that, you know, they weren't hard workers. But truth be told, it was those same millennials and Gen Z who were out there on those streets marching for change. Those were the ones who were on the front line. And it just made my heart proud. And when I look at people like yourself, I admire you. You're putting the burdens of our community on your shoulder. It's what you do. You're an activist. But for people like me, who might not be on those front lines, what can we all do to play our part, as you say? What can people who are not going to be marching in those streets, what can people who are not going out there and willing to be handcuffed and, and sent to jail because it sends a louder message to the establishment? How can we help the movement in our own way? Well, I mean, there's so many different ways, you know. There are some some people have platforms, like yourself, interviewing me, giving me this platform to be able to, you know, tell people what it is we, we can be doing. You know, it's, it's other people who, you know, Harry Belafonte Fonte was funded Martin Luther King. You know, he was a, a, a he was one of the first um, artists, part of the movement. And he funded Martin Luther King. He utilized his platform to talk about what Dr. King was speaking about. So there's so many different ways. Everybody just has to figure out what is it that I'm possibly. Doing. Maybe I just have a Facebook account to where, and I have a thousand people. And I, maybe I can't make it to the march, but I want to tweet out about it. Maybe this organization that I know that's doing the work in, in my, my local community, you know, that I know about, they might need some people to join. Maybe I can tell people to join it. Maybe I could donate, you know, invest. I don't like really the word donate. I like invest because, you know, our organization, Until Freedom, you know, is an organization which we created roughly over a year ago. And we, we decided that, we wanted an organization that represented what it is that we are. You know, the, the way that you spoke about how the, my activism doesn't look like something else and, and, and it's just authentic and it's unique. I wanted people like that to feel like they had a space in this movement. And, you know, and that's what we did. So when you, whatever you give to our organization is an investment in our own freedom. You know, it is an investment in our freedom because we want to stay independent of corporations and things like that funding us. Because when you get funded by corporations, then you have an obligation to their needs. You know, you can't say certain things because, you know, these are the people paying your bills. That's what happens with a lot of our greatest civil rights leaders today. You know, they, they started out independent and then they needed to pay bills. And then corporations was the ones that said, okay, well, we'll fund you. But you can't say this, and mm -hmm. you can't do this, you know. And you you definitely can't be on outside advocating against this, you know. So the the voices start getting lower, you know. The, the respect in the community diminishes, and then you know once again they figured out how to divide and conquer us again. So that's one thing that we're very you know adamant about is being supported. When I say I work for the people, it's literally you know I want my voice to always be authentic, or I don't want to be a part of it, you know. So yeah, we need we need all of that. We need people who are willing to stand with us. We need people who are willing to to advocate with us. We need people who are willing to financially support us. We need you know boots on the ground. We need some people who who only know how to do the internet. Who you know we need. It's so many different ways, man. And you just got to know what it is that your strong point is, and how can you contribute to the movement. You know, and how and, and what organizations and what individuals best fit what it is that you want to relay. You know, there are so many different organizations that are really doing this work that are grassroots on the ground. So find your organization that you attach to, that you connect to in some way or another, and you know, figure out how do you, can you, you can support them. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.